Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem 2551 from lead code. The problem's name is put marbles in bag. So this is actually not a complicated problem. People were talking of DPN stuff. It can easily be solved by a greedy algorithm. So I'll be discussing that. It only requires a simple logic and intuition. So the problem states that you have k bags. You are given a zero indexed integer array weights where weight i is the weight of the ith marble. You are also given a, in a integer k. Divide the marbles into k bags. according to the following rules so no bag should be empty if the ith marble and the jth marble are in a bag then all the marbles between i and j would also be in the same bag also if a bag contains the marbles from the index i to j inclusively then the cost of the bag would be weight i plus weight j uh, the score after distributing the marble is the sum of all the cost of the k bags right so you will be actually uh, populating or you will be storing the marbles in k bags such that no bag is empty and after that the cost for each of bag would be uh, the starting and the ending index or the uh, weight of the starting stone and the ending stone that is i and j if all the stones from i and j are present in the bag then the score would become the sum of all uh, sum of cost of all the bags right so in that way we can have some maximum score and we can have some minimum score so we have to print the difference or we have to return the difference between the maximum and minimum scores available after distributing all these marbles so that's the question let's go through the constraints So over here, k is less than or equal to ten to power five, and weight of i is less than or equal to ten to power nine. Now the problem is that if you were trying to apply DP over here, then uh, you would at least like uh, ha have a two D two D array, right? And the two D array would actually be of ten to power ten. So the time complexity and also the space complexity wouldn't allow you to do that. Otherwise, if these constraints were low, then a DP solution would also have been possible over here. but uh, i'll be explain the greedy greedy solution itself so let's get started with it now very simple uh, thing over here to observe is that if, if this is my array right and by array i mean these are the stones which i have placed in a array so since i have to add all the stones into into some of the other, other bag some or the other bag so definitely stone at 0 and the stone at n minus 1 would also be present right now since there's no stone to the uh, like left of it and there's no stone to the right of it So zero definitely has to be sum of the starting index. So uh, by starting index, what I mean is that if I'm putting i uh, j stones from the range i to j in a in a bag, right? Let's say this is my bag. I'm putting i to j in this bag. Then I'm calling i to be the starting index and j to be the ending index. So the index zero definitely has to be one of the starting indexes. Indices. So that is obvious. And the index n minus one definitely has to be one of the ending indices. that's cool so with that uh th this would actually be mean that since starting index and ending index or w of i plus w of j would need to be added for all the bags right so i can say that one of the starting index is zero always and n minus 1 is also one of the starting index always so my minimum and the maximum answer would at least contain weight of zero plus weight of n minus 1 similarly maximum index would at also contain this at least right this is a value that will present would be present in all the cases after that what i can say is for the remaining indices so from 0 to n minus 2 now why n minus 2 because over here i am considering the ending indices since i have already said that n minus 1 is already present in my answer so i am not considering n minus uh, sorry n minus 1 is already present in my answer so i am not considering n, n minus 1 over here So I'll be going on only through n minus two. Now let's say from i is equal to zero to n minus two, right? Now let's say i is the ending point. Now what would happen if i is the ending point? Now let's say I choose a random i. Let's say this is the i I'm choosing. Now if this is the ending point, then I know that since all the stone needs to be added, def uh, so de definitely the index i plus one, that is the index right over here. this would be the next starting point so this would become the next starting point obviously right so in other words what i can say is that if i choose i as the uh, i as the ending index then that would incur a cost of weight of i right but now the i plus 1 index would also become a valid uh, like a valid index you can say or a starting index of the other bag so i'll also have to add w of i plus 1 because i'm considering uh, if i'm closing at uh, closing at i i'm going to have to start at i plus 1 itself right so let me store these values into a vector now let's call a vector maybe costs 
just a random name cool so i'll be storing all of these values in a vector cos dot push weight of i plus weight of i plus 1 the consideration is that this is one of the start uh, ending indexes right and this is one of the starting indices now after i'm done with this loop i'll definitely have a lot of values around order of n values so or you can say exactly n minus 2 values in this uh, array right rather n minus 1 values because it's zero base indexing so i'll be having n minus 1 values so what i can do with this but the thing is that i don't want to uh, group the bags or i don't want to have n bags in total if i select all of them then i'll be having n bags in total i just want to have k bags right however one of the segregation i've already done over here so even if i start i have a single uh, index that i select as the ending index even in that case i'll be dividing it into two parts right so let's say i selected i as a, uh, like as an ending index so this would become one array let me change the color cool so this would become one array in that case and this would become the other array or in order to generalize you can say that i just want to have to select k minus one pairs now or k minus one values now from my vector which actually contains the uh, which actually contain the costs so let me try to sort it firstly so i'll be sorting the co costs what that would do is that it would give me the lowest values first so when i consider these values i'll be able to make my minimum cost vector and then i'll all uh, and the ending values in the cost vector now would contain the maximum values so that would give uh, that would give me the maximum values possible right at the end i can add these values to my max variable i can add these values to my min variable and I can return the difference between the two. Cool. So that's it about the problem. Now let's look at the code. The code is fairly simple. So the code is firstly I'm taking uh, like a vector which I said costs its uh, values over here. Then I'm taking a variable n that is the size of the array that has been provided to us. Then my minimum and my maximum. As I said that they would at least contain the uh, zeroth element and the n minus one element. So I'll make them equal after that there is an edge case so let's say i just wanted a single bag right or i wanted uh, or the number of stones i'm having are actually one in that case this uh, score of the minimum and maximum is going to be same right so i'll return zero simply after that what i'm saying is okay i can actually yeah that's that's still fine so what i'm saying is if my i is equal to n minus one right so this would actually never happen so i can actually remove this this is fine cool so as i said that okay this is also removed cool so as i said that i'll be going from 0 to n minus 2 index so you can write it like this the thing remains same so then if all in all of these indices i want to add weight of i plus weight of i plus 1 and i want to store it into uh, into a vector called vals right after i'm done with that i'll sort this particular vector and then i'll add the least possible values or least k values into a minimum variable so I'm running this loop from zero to k minus one. So the f first uh, first k minus one values would get stored into m n, and the last k values uh, k minus one values would get stored into m x. At the end, I'll I would be running m x minus m n, or the cost of the maximum possible value and the minimum possible value. Uh, I hope you were able to understand this solution. If not, you can let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to help you out. Cool guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye bye.